Welcome back to the Naked Proverbs podcast, where we unclothe the truth about black love, family, and marriage. My name is Nick Scott, one of your hosts. And as always, I am here with my handsome husband. What's going on? It's your boy, Rich. And today we are talking about physical attraction. Right at the beginning of every episode, we always remind you that we are not trained, licensed, or professional therapists or counselors. We've been married nearly two decades, and Naked Proverbs is our platform to share our stories, our experience, our advice, and our opinions. And how fine we are. If you're watching the video podcast. Oh. If you haven't already, make sure that you're following The Naked Proverbs on whatever platform you listen to your podcast on. And if you like what you hear, show us your love and support by giving us a five-star rating on iTunes or whatever platform you are currently listening on. As always, we like to start out by saying thank you to our listeners. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for being a part of our journey. Speaking of our listeners, did you know that we have listeners in over 12 different countries. 12 countries? Countries. Not states. Not states. Countries. Yes, we are international. I'm international, baby. International. You better get on board. Understand. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate y'all. Man, have you been paying attention to the news? You know I don't watch the news. So you know our very own Princess and the Frog. <laughs> Our, our real life t- Tiana. Yes, our real life Tiana is trying to break away from the Royals. They trying to leave. Well, good. I mean, here's the thing. We are a weekly podcast and sometimes over the week, certain stuff blows up and we don't get a chance to talk about it until the following recording. Right. So even though this might be some old news to some folks. No, it ain't old news in England. <laughs> I just read this morning how the queen is still really not on board with this disruptor of divorce. Who's the disruptor? Well, and I think that's the key here. Sometimes you can have a situation where stuff's been done a certain way for so long that people believe it's the right way. But then when somebody be like, man, you know what? Y'all ain't going to kill my wife like you did my mama. Y'all ain't about to be stressing her out and driving her off no cliff. Like, we out. So that's a disruptor. Like, that is not the royal way. I saw a comment on social media that accurately reflects all of my thoughts. So instead of Uh me trying to re-articulate everything that I think about it, no, I'm going to read it. Oh, I just thought maybe our patrons should get something special. Our patrons get things special all the time. If you're not a patron, you're missing out because there's always some good stuff on Patreon that you're missing out on if you're not a patron. But this young woman, let me find it here. Why are you looking for it? I, did you find it? I got it. Okay, then I never mind. I got it. So my young sister, I'm assuming she's young based on her profile picture. Demetria L. Lucas. Girl, if you're listening, you got to get quoted. You, I'm quoting you. Mm. This was on Facebook. I saw this. She said, I have never in life seen so many people mad about two grown ass people who want to work things out. This is worse than when LeBron went to Miami. Laughing emoji. The raging racism compounded with sexism toward Megan is astounding. A lot of folks are really mad that this black woman refuses to be treated bad and that her own husband is willing to literally leave and cleave a biblical principle to protect her. If you got a raggedy husband that won't protect you, that's a you problem. And if you're a raggedy ass husband that won't protect your wife, that's a y'all problem. That ain't got shit to do with cousin Megan. Sheesh. I also find it entirely amusing how all his adult life, Harry has been thought of as cheeky and rebellious, but somehow this whole entire peace out must be solely Megan's idea. And he's just some ball less man blindly following. Stop it. Folks refuse to believe two grown ass married ass people in a union worked in unison to make a decision together because they wanted out. I love this whole thing. They've been executing it for months. The Royals are on some. This isn't finished. 
We're still in talks. Meanwhile, Megan's already dipped back to Canada. There are so many things in that excerpt that Demetria wrote that applies so specifically to this Meghan Markle thing. A, the way that these two are married and they are working together. They obviously didn't come up with this overnight. This is something that they've talked about together and she's choosing to leave because these people have been bullying her and attacking her the whole time she's been there. I also read a small snippet of what someone had to say. And what I found interesting was they were basically saying that what Megan is facing is what black women face all the time, which is getting all the blame placed on them, which is basically what you were reading, you know, parts of it. And in this situation, it's like, because they are an interracial couple, things are looked at differently. I think, I believe, because if Megan was married to an African-American man, a European black man, a person of color, and I mean, because unfortunately, we probably don't have a whole lot of positions of royalty out there, but was in a position of power and they decided to step away from the family business, step away from the, the limelight and go do their own thing. It wouldn't even be real news. No one would care. But because they're interracially married, that plays a factor as well. And I think that people want to downplay it because by actually addressing it and speaking about it, it points out that she's been dealing with some racism. She's been dealing with some things that, like I said earlier, two black people probably wouldn't be dealing with, honestly. That is such good stuff that you bring to the table because one- I agree. <laughs> I bet you do. Because one thing that has remained the same throughout history up until present time is that white folks believe that they have some type of authority in controlling black bodies. And the fact that all these white folks in England could not control Megan, the fact that they per perceive that her husband a white male can't control her, that's a problem. I think it goes back to what Demetria was saying in her excerpt that I read that these people work together as a married couple and the, the tribulations and the trials that they're gonna face as an interracial couple, this is just the beginning. Like this, this is just the beginning. And I think that those trials and tribulations it's not just because they're royals i mean i think everybody's putting the focus on that because that's the easy thing to latch on to but like you said if this was any other couple even in a like if this was barack obama and michelle obama the most powerful couple black couple that i've ever seen on this earth right mm -hmm. and michelle because first of all, I don't want to keep saying like Megan made this decision because we don't know what the conversation was. We don't know why they decided to step away and to do something different. But if Michelle, because since everybody's blaming Megan, let's hypothetically, we're going to blame Michelle. Because it's always the black woman's fault. Right. It's always our fault. If she told Barack, you know what, after the first four years of his amazing presidency, she said, you know what, this ain't going to work. We, we walking away from being in this position. Would it really be this big of a deal? Would it be making a national news? Would everybody be talking about it? I don't think that they would. I think that a lot of racist white folk would be happy. They would have been happy if the Obamas would have stepped down after one term. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't have made national news outside of the fact that he was the president stepping down. But no one would have been like, oh, Michelle made this happen. They would have thought, oh, you know what, Barack had enough or he can't handle it. He's not smart enough. Yep. They would have blamed the black man in that situation. Yep. But in this situation, it's easy to blame her. Because we're always wrong. We're always the aggressors. We're always the initiators. In reality, it could have been Harry that mm -hmm. wanted to protect his wife from the bullying, from the constant negative. Like, who wants to live in constant negative energy? And my yeah. husband would want to protect me from that. that. So why wouldn't Harry want to protect his wife, the mother of his child, from, from being beat down emotionally and psychologically and being abused? What husband wouldn't want to protect his wife from abuse? And any husband that doesn't or wouldn't 
there's issue. There should be issue with that. So, you know, I applaud y'all. You know, I'll give y'all some snaps and some claps. For all of you that want to hear more about how we feel and our thoughts on black love and marriage, specifically the importance of it, go ahead and check out one of our old episodes. Episode, I don't know. It's called Black Love Matters, period. And I think this is a prime example of why we had that episode. She ain't as fine as she used to be, boy. Who? I know you ain't talking about me. I know. I was just playing. <laughs> I was just playing. <laughs> You right, you right. You <laughs> still, hey, you still got it. You got it even better than you did because you didn't grow up a little bit now. Yeah, like a fine uh, wine, baby. But reality is, there are some people out there that have been married for a long time. Some people that have been married for a short time that are no longer physically attracted to their spouse. They have lost it. That's too bad. That is too bad. You and I had conversations jokingly when we were first married. I wasn't joking. Joking, but serious, right? Like, let's be clear. Both of us have our, have a certain level of vanity about our personalities. I like to look good. I do look good. (laughs) Next. And I want you to look good. Right. Like... I would not have married you if you wasn't as fine as you are. You used to say you didn't want no man with no cotton cotton hair. I, that's for real. <laughs> well, it wasn't cotton y'all hair. Can see, I ain't got no cotton hair, baby. It wasn't cotton hair. It was carpet hair. Carpet hair, cotton hair. It's about the same. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, is when we married, you were bald. So I had no idea what kind of hair you had. <laughs> That's funny. Until later in life, I thought about it. I'm like, I don't want no man with no carpet hair. What does that even even mean? You know what carpet hair is. Is that like A hair, A level A hair? Oh, you you mean like hair type? B hair, C hair. It's like, I don't even know if it's on the (laughs) hair type scale, the kind of hair that I was talking about. But Mm. no, seriously, we had this thing when we were younger and we still kind of refer back to it now where we would say i would say 20 years from now i ain't gonna be the zero in the number 10 because you know Mm -hmm. as as couples age and they're married for a long time they be walking around looking like a number 10 where one person is all thin and skinny usually the man Mm. (laughs) and then the woman be all round and fluffy and she the zero well i ain't we ain't about to be no number 10 and they look like the number 10 I, I see what you're saying, but we have been the double O before. I ain't never been no zero. Girl, when we was in Hawaii, we was kind of round. I was round. I, I'll post some pictures of us. No, you won't. Yes, I will. I'm I, gonna... You just said I'm vain, and now you're going to show some people some times when I was not as nice as look, I look now? I think our patrons deserve to see some of this background information that okay. we're talking about. Okay, I'll, I'll let y'all see it. Okay, we just talked about our patrons, so yeah, y'all get to see how unround i was and Mm. how round he was i'm not gonna lie we were (laughs) round but you know sometimes in a marriage when you have one person that is just physically fit they like to exercise they like to eat healthy they like to do their thing right and the other person maybe they are not uh, as prone to be healthy or to make healthy choices uh, and they're living their best life it can create issue because you can have where they lose that physical attraction to one another and it can create a lack of sexual desire Mm -hmm. it can create a environment where one one spouse is nitpicking the other spouse because really the issue is with the way you look yep or the way you present yourself but they're not saying that so they're just nitpicking every little thing you do lack of respect within that marriage or a lack of affection and a lack of intimacy Mm -hmm. and I think that that's very dangerous because those can lead to larger issues or even divorce so it's very very important that you actually pay attention to that I think that we are so easily persuaded to believe that physical attraction shouldn't matter in Mm -hmm. marriage that we just overlook it and then these other issues become these huge landmines in our marriage and we don't even know how we got here physical attraction might seem shallow 
it might seem shallow for a man to say, and in fact, men get shamed for it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> for saying, uh, you gained a little weight. When in reality, he might just be saying, you know what? I am more attracted to you with a little less weight or a little more weight. Because right. sometimes, because you've told yeah. me before, yeah, girl, you got you're too, too skinny. skinny. One time. You was working out, eating right. I mean, it was, you know, it was good. But I'm like, girl, look, it ain't no cushion for the pushing. You, you, know, <laughs> you, you a little bony back here. I need you to put a little weight, weight on it, baby. Put a little weight on it. But the fact is, we cannot minimize the importance of it. We cannot minimize the importance of it. Men and women both are stimulated by physical attraction so i true. want you to look good you want me to look good the sex is good when both of us are feeling good about each other physical change is going to happen right it's yep. in, it's inevitable as we age things are going to shift change move grow shrink and sometimes it just completely goes away but my opinion is unless there is a medical environmental health or some other reason that's beyond your control let me say that again beyond your control because a lot of the things that we say we can't control we really can't eating too much is under your control exercising is under your control yes it is so, choosing just healthier choices all together it's in your control it's in your control it's yeah. our responsibility it's my responsibility as your wife, as his wife, to make sure that I stay as close to the picture that you married as possible. It's it physically, it is my responsibility to do that. And I put the same type of pressure and responsibility on him as my husband. You know, because like you said in the beginning, it's something that people don't necessarily place a lot of weight on because it's like, ooh, that's so shallow. But research has shown that couples that are physically attracted to each other have a more affectionate relationship in marriage because you can't say that, well, it mattered when we got married hmm. or it mattered when I started dating you or it mattered when I was walking through the aisle and I saw you. Right. But then all of a sudden it don't matter no more. Like, and this doesn't diminish the importance of the emotional and, and the deep stuff and all the deep stuff. But you can't just totally eliminate something that played a factor in y'all even talking. Because let's be real. Nobody, I don't care who you are, nobody's going to say, I met them on the internet, never saw them, and we just fell in love. At some point, you saw them, and that was a criteria that had to be met. There was a physical attraction that had to be met for you to be where you are. 100%. To me... It's like my great grandmother uh -oh. told my grandmother, who told my mother, who told me, and I've told my daughters, count them, that's five generations. This has been passed down in my family and any of my cousins who listen to my podcast, y'all know I'm not lying. And what my great grandmother used to tell my grandmother who told my mother who told me and I told my daughters is you better keep your figure if you want to keep your nigga. And that's real talk. If you want to keep your nigga, then make sure that you're doing the things physically, not just the the other stuff. Right. You can be a great cook. But if that figure ain't right, trust and believe he going to be gone. That nigga going to be gone somewhere. Because remember, like if it creates a lack of sexual desire, mm -hmm. it creates a lack of respect. Like it creates a bunch of negative things when there is no physical attraction in a marriage any longer. Mm -hmm. So those things become bigger issues. If you as a husband don't keep yourself fit, you know, you go to have sex with your wife and you can't even continue because you all out of breath. You all sweating all on her and weighing her out and Ooh. she can't breathe. Like, that's nasty, right? <laughs> oh, that ain't attractive. That's that horrible. is not making her feel like she matters. That is impacting your own self. What am I trying to say? It's, it's impacting how you look at yourself, right? So it's impacting your confidence. It's impact. So these things, while they seem shallow, have bigger issues that become 
like I said earlier, huge canyons in your marriage, which can lead to divorce, can lead, lead to affairs, can lead to all these issues that honestly could have been avoided just by you actually caring about your appearance. And it's not only that, but part of being married is holding each other accountable, right? So if my husband says, you getting a little skinny, of course, my initial reaction is going to get in, some, in my feelings, right? Like, he can't tell me. But you got to get over yourself. Marriage is not about you. It really isn't. When you can start to understand that I am your wife and I am here for you. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to help you. So just like you have roles as a husband, I have roles as a wife. And one of those is to make sure that you stay attracted to me. I, it's my, again, I just, I feel like it is my responsibility. It's almost like a Shrek movie, right? Y'all seen the movie Shrek? And if you marry an ogre, chances are he's gonna stay an ogre, period. Like you cannot turn an ogre into a prince no matter how hard you try, you might be able to change his clothes or whatever, but he's still gonna look like an ogre. But as princess, remember the princess and she turned into an ogre? That is real life. And no man wants to marry a princess and then 10, 15, 20, 30 years later. Three. Th ooh. Whatever. Three? I mean, it can happen. She might have a baby or something. And then, you know, she just lets herself go because she's tired and the baby crying. Damn. And, Three? I mean, hey, I see it. It can happen. I know. You know what's real? Was real talk though. When our girls were in elementary school and I would see them moms. Oh, yeah. I'd be like, why do they look like that? I'd be like, my, my wife get it in. And then we would go to stuff and I know men would be looking like, damn, how do y'all, how does she, my wife don't look like that. Damn. There was no damn way that I was going to <laughs> let my husband come home from a mm -hmm. hard day's work where women in low cut blouses and little tight mini skirts and looking, they bet like they getting they men, they want they men. And he gonna come home to me looking like, do rag on your head and or a scarf and your sweatpants on and like because let's be real it's not just you gained weight everybody mm -hmm. gets focused on you gained weight but it's you not even putting that effort in anymore you don't do your hair you don't shave no more you know you sit on the couch all day and now you smell a little ripe and you don't even get in the shower before your spouse comes home because let's be real there's some men that work from home or are unemployed or whatever and their wives are out there getting it making it happen right she comes home not only have you not cooked no dinner or nothing but you sitting on the couch watching reruns like you <laughs> are losing that physical attraction like she don't want to come home to that no she don't she don't she does not want to come home to that again it's easy to get in your feelings right it's easy to be like well why is he or why is she because it matters. It truly does matter. Do you know how much temptation there is out in these streets for men and women? Okay. And if a man or a woman is going to stray, they're going to, they're going to stray. There's not really a whole lot you can do about it. But again, those things that you can control, the things that you can control, I urge you to control them. I urge you to control them. I urge you not to look like the mamas that I used to see in elementary school because it matters. It matters. And on an even deeper aspect of this, because you know, some people may feel this is shallow on a deeper aspect. My wife deserves as many years as I am going to be able to give her. And if I choose not to be healthy or if I choose to not care about how I am or how I look, then I'm taken away from my family. Like, you know, your health matters. And when you choose to act like it doesn't, because well, grandma ain't ever ate healthy in her life and she's 85. But look at the quality of life that grandma has. Is that really the life you want? You know, it's not just about longevity. Just like I've said in marriage, who cares if you've been married for 50 years, if you hate each other? I know I don't. I am not basing my marriage off of how long we've been married because that's just a number. Quality over quantity. It's quality over quantity, definitely. Quality over quantity, that's very important because referencing back to when we were in Hawaii and mm. one of us was a little rounder than the other, it was at that point 
that I know for me that I decided to change my life. And yes, it was the physical that got my attention. It was that photo. I was like, ooh, whose butt is that? Like, my butt don't look like that. Like, who is she? Who you walking with? Who Like, who, like for real. <laughs> I almost couldn't recognize myself. So, of course, it was that physical that grabbed my attention. But I had to think about what type of lifestyle did I want 20 years from then? Right. 30 years from then. Did I want to be the grandmother or the great-grandmother who's tied to uh, one place in the house? who's, you know, just unhealthy and in and out the hospital, can't do things with their grandchildren. That is not the type of quality of life that I wanted for myself. So I made the change, not just for him, right? But for me too. It's easy to point out all of the horrible things, right? Um, All these negative aspects of losing that physical attraction. But what if you're there? What if it's happened and you are the zero or you're both a couple of zeros or you, you know, you smell funny now. What if you reach this point? <laughs> Wait, why do they have to smell funny? Because if you sit on the couch all day and don't take a shower, you probably smell funny. OK, <laughs> right. I mean, I'm just making an assumption. I mean, if you don't shower on a regular basis, you smell funny. Okay. I don't care what anybody says you do. OK, I get OK. It. All right. You can be skinny. You can be overweight. You can be midweight. Doesn't matter if you don't shower. You smell funny. OK, so that's my point. All right. OK. <laughs> But if you've reached this point, right, how do you get out of it? How do you actually change that lack of physical attraction? And I think the simple solution is get out. Oh, my God. No, you didn't. What? First of all, this is not the movie. You didn't even let me finish what I had to say. Yeah. Though. Get out and change the situation. Okay. Okay, see, okay, see okay, you okay. jumped on you because sure you thought I meant leave. No, I told y'all in the beginning I am a strong supporter of marriage. So no, I, if you can't handle a little bit of you need to change and work on yourself, mm. you wasn't ready to get married. Ooh, but uh, that was good, baby. Oh no, I be saying deep stuff. Sometimes. That was real good. But you need to get out and change the situation individually as well as a couple. Some things you can do, I think. One big one is remember. Instead of focusing on the current situation, focus on your partner's strengths. Because like we said, you know, we kind of glossed over it quickly, but your partner brings something more than just that physical aspect to the marriage. Hopefully. Hopefully, right. And focus on that while you are making changes. We are not just changing direction and saying, well, let's, we're not going to focus on your health or we're not going to focus on you know, the lack of physical attraction, we're going to focus on this. We're only focusing on it until we can start to create a plan to change those things that are creating that lack of physical attraction. Sometimes it might feel lonely, right? If you're the zero and your spouse is the one, it might feel lonely and it might seem inaccomplishable. Is that even a word? It is because I just said said it. it. Yep. I just said it. Mm. It might feel inaccomplishable, because maybe your spouse is mean about it. But just like we talked about with Harry and Megan at the beginning, they are working together to resolve a problem. So it is up to both spouses to tackle something, especially as big as physical appearance and health and diet and exercise together. And that's it, do it together. If you're the spouse that is physically fit or has been getting it in and you know, you're the one, don't look de- it's it's almost that meme you see all the time where it's like someone that's overweight in the gym you shouldn't laugh at them they are actually trying to make a change right they are working to change the situation they have found themselves in and because it's easy to just look up and you're overweight it really is as an adult your metabolism slowing down you're not necessarily eating healthy you're making some bad choices so you look up and you're like man how did i get here and then you have a spouse that's not supporting you, it makes it hard for you to make those changes. So as that spouse that may be the attractive one, make sure that you are supporting your spouse as they work to get their sexy back. Because it's gonna take work, y'all. And it's not anything that's easy. For us to go from, that was year 10 when Mm -hmm. we were in Hawaii. We're at year 18, so it's been eight years. And we both made a conscious decision 
to change the way we looked physically and to change our lifestyles. Yes, it had something to do with our vanity, but it also has to do with the amount of years that we want to be on this earth, to quality years right. that we want to be on this earth together. And just because you fall off the wagon, because trust and believe, I have fallen off the wagon many a times. I fell, fell off the wagon two days ago. And I might fall off the wagon tomorrow. But guess what? That wagon is there for me to get back on. Support each other. Don't chastise each other. Don't make each other feel bad about it, right? Encourage each other. Now, there are times where I have to sometimes get stern and real. Mm -hmm. And I don't like it. But it's out of love. Like, I don't talk to him like a child. I still don't like it. Well, I don't like it when you hold me accountable either. But, but I appreciate it. But it's part of our job. Yeah, I appreciate it. So at the end of the day, if you are noticing those signs in your marriage that we mentioned earlier, you know, that lack of sexual desire, you're kind of nitpicking at one another or there's some lack of respect, lack of affection, intimacy, and just there's no desire, then stop and think about, well, is this because there's been some changes to us physically and this is something we can solve. Like this doesn't require us to be divorced. It doesn't require us to stay on this road. It doesn't require us to continue down this path. How can we work to change this to make ourselves have a better, stronger marriage? And let's be clear, the longer you're married, the older you're going to get. And getting old is no joke. It's no joke, y'all. There are going to be things that your spouse or you used to be able to do that now you cannot do. And I'm specifically talking about sexually, right? Because we're talking about physical attraction and there are just, you just ain't going to be able to do it. And you should not expect your spouse or yourself to be able to do it. What are we talking about? Like you throwing your leg behind your head? Yeah, that can't happen no more though. Girl, you better take some yoga classes. <laughs> there are 85 year old women that are still flexible. Don't make no excuses make it happen. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of The Naked Proverbs. We want you to truly have a happy marriage. We want you to continue to thrive in your marriages and indulge in your spouses on a regular basis. Don't forget to follow us on whatever podcasting platform you are listening on, and we will talk to y'all in the next one. Peace.